The complaint I hear most when I'm out showing houses to clients is bedroom size. Bedrooms are never big enough. This video is going to be the first in a six part series detailing room by room how to get your house ready for market. Getting your house ready for market is what makes you more money and what gets your house sold fast. Today we're going to focus on bedrooms. How to make your bedrooms appear bigger and how to make them inviting to potential buyers. Hi, my name is Joel Y. I've been a licensed real estate agent in the state of Kansas since 2009. And before that, I was a project manager in the residential construction arena. So I've been in and around real estate pretty much my entire adult life. And that's where I gained all the insight and knowledge that I use to help you to sell your house yourself. Yeah, bedrooms never seem to be big enough. That is the one complaint I hear most. When I'm out showing houses, it's almost like I wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. There it is, yep. The bedrooms aren't big enough. I hear it all the time. So today I'm gonna show you how to make the bedrooms appear to be bigger and how to make them more inviting so that buyers will, will find them irresistible along with the rest of your house. And stick around to the end of this video because I'm gonna give you a resource that you can print out that will, will help guide you through getting your bedrooms ready for market. And, and also we'll give you some little bonus tips at the end. The first thing to do with bedrooms when getting your house ready to sell is to declutter. I know you hear that a lot and we say it about every room, but it is oh so true. And decluttering is kind of relative because decluttering to one person might be completely different to another person. But basically, to me, decluttering is getting everything out of the house that's not like necessary. Like all your little personal items. You know, take your coffee cups off the counters, little baskets full of pens. Um, what is this? This is an oil burners. You know, all that stuff that is just kind of there that, that's your stuff that you're used to, to. To a potential buyer, that's clutter. That's personal stuff. You know, pictures on the wall of family. That's clutter. I, I know that sounds harsh, but to, to people looking at your house, that's what it is. So we want to get all that out of there. So before you even start working on this list, just get everything out of the bedroom that you don't need for every day to day living. That means take everything off of the nightstands, off the top of the dressers, um, you know, off in, in any like baskets or, or boxes or things that are on the bedroom floor. Get all that stuff out of there. And if you have a TV in your bedroom, and if it's like mounted up on the wall, that's cool, that's okay. But if it's like sitting up on top of the dresser or just propped up on the end of the bed somehow, take that out of there for now. You'll get used to it and it's only why we, why we, until we get your house sold. And, when we, and, and, and in actuality, when you do these things, your house is going to sell faster so you don't have to live with that discomfort for long. Okay? And now let's talk about light. Now, light is the same in every room in the house, but it's especially in, in important in bedrooms um, because bedrooms need to be made to look bigger. Um, so we want natural light. Natural light is the best, always. Like, there's natural light here when I'm making this video coming in from this window. Over here is nothing. Computer screens, but that's not natural light. So you want to open all your drapes, all your blinds, um, all the curtains, and then clean the windows so that all the light can get through that glass. So natural light's the best. And for the fixtures, like fans or can lights or just light fixtures, put in, put in brighter bulbs than you're used to, unless you already use 100 watt bulbs. And also, they make these days like, like uh, soft light and then daylight, they call them. Use the daylight bulbs and use 75 or 100 watt bulbs because it really just booms a room. And the brighter the room is, the, 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 the bigger it's going to appear. And that will lead us into paint. And of course, paint. Everybody hates to talk about paint because nobody wants to paint. Paint is actually the, one of the biggest ROIs you can get when you're getting your house ready to sell. ROI stands for Return on Investment. For the money that you put into painting, the return that you get out of it is huge. Seriously. And especially in bedrooms. If you have like dark colors on the walls in bedrooms, oh, that, may, that just makes the bedrooms shrink up so tiny. And, and, I, and I've seen it hundreds of times when I walk into a bedroom and they've got like, you know, burgundy or dark brown or whatever walls. And, and the bedroom just looks so tiny and confined when you're in there. But if you paint them like a, kind of like an off-white beige, you know, not, not, don't, don't let that beige lean toward yellow, more toward the brown side. But just off-white and beige, really, really light and very neutral. That will make the room appear bigger. So that'd be, you know, that, that's a really good idea to do. And so furniture. 
Okay, furniture. Furniture is a big one. You know, if you've ever been in one of these bedrooms, or maybe yours is like that, where you have a, a, a bedroom set, where you've got like this great big huge headboard that stretches to the ceiling with doors and drawers and shelves and knobs and handles and everything else, and then two gigantic matching nightstands, and then maybe two or three dressers that match the whole thing. Now, if all that furniture fits in your room nice, and you still have lots of room, not room, but lots of room to maneuver around and do what you do in bedrooms, then that's great. But most houses I see, that's not the case. Most houses that have all that in it, the bed makes the bedrooms look small. So get as much of that stuff out of there as you can, including the headboard and the footboard and the extra dresser. Um, and, and even the nightstands if they're too big. But, but you'll be able to tell. You'll be able to feel it yourself. And if you need to get somebody over there to help you, to kind of, you know, because you're just used to it and it might, it might look okay to you. But get like family members um, that don't live there or, or friends to come over and kind of, Whatever furniture is left in there, just move it around and, and just make sure that there's a, that it appears that there's a lot of space in there where people can walk through easily and not have to turn sideways to, to squeeze between the bed and the dresser. In the kids' rooms, you know, kids like to have their posters of their superheroes and their sports heroes and their idols and whatever else on the wall, whatever kids stick on walls. Take all that stuff down and take all their toys, all their stuff and put it away somewhere. Beds should be made, of course, and they should have a covering on them. So if you don't have a bed covering, consider getting one and not one of those big, huge, fluffy down things. Just get something that, that simply goes over the bed and it doesn't take up a whole lot of room. And, and make sure that it comes down to the floor because we don't want buyers to be able to see underneath the bed. And then plus you can put stuff under there. You can store your clutter underneath there so it's out of sight. Closets in all the rooms should be half to three-quarter full, more toward half. Half is better. And the reason being is because if you've got all your clothes in there and your closets are stuffed full of shoes and clothes and suitcases on the floor and it makes the closets look really small. And closets are a big deal. Closets are something that everybody looks at. And, 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 if, you, and if your closet just like has, has a few clothes hanging on it or like half your stuff and then there's still still empty space, the other half is still empty, it makes it look like there's lots of space. So buyers look at it like, yeah, there's lots of space in here. There's plenty of space for all my stuff, even though we don't know how much stuff they got, but it's all about perception. And we want the buyer to perceive that there's lots of room in the closet and that the bedrooms are big. That's our whole goal here, is to make the house irresistible, to make the house, to make the buyer fall in love with the house. Because when your house is irresistible, you get higher offers and it creates bidding wars. And bidding wars is what we want. And then plus, once you're in contract, if the buyer is in love with your house, the deal is less likely to fall apart over inspections or, you know, if they get cold feet or whatever. And that's pretty much it. Light colors on the walls, open the drapes and windows, clean the windows, make sure that there's, the room isn't crowded with furniture, the bedspread, and, uh, and we'll make your house irresistible. Um, if you do all that stuff, it'll really help to sell the house and it'll give one less thing for buyers to complain about. And that's our whole goal of that, is to give buyers no reason to complain about the room size. So basically the takeaway points here are less stuff makes the room look bigger and making the room brighter makes the room appear bigger. So a little bonus tip here for sticking around to the end. When I'm meeting with sellers, I always tell them to pick up some of those plastic bins, you know, with the snap-on lids like you get at Walmart or Target, or you can even order them from Amazon if you don't want to go to the store. But pick up one, two, three of those, however many you need, to put your clutter and stuff in that you're, that you're trying to get out of sight, and then you can stack those bins, put them in storage, and then it's there when you're ready to move. So you've basically started packing already. And since you're going to follow all this great advice we give you and your house is going to sell so fast, you won't be doing without that stuff for very long. And with those bins, keep a couple of those in each kid's room. And right before a showing or before you go to work in the morning, take all the kids' toys that they had pulled out the day before because that's going to happen. And you know that as well as I do. And put them all in those bins, slap the lid on it, and tuck it underneath the bed if they're shallow enough. If not, just stack them in the corner. And that way, you're always ready to show. If you found some value in this video, hit the like button down below here. And also subscribe to our channel with the notifications tab so that when we post new videos that are going to give you tips and strategies to help you make more money when you're selling your house yourself, because isn't that the goal? To make more money? Isn't that why you're selling your house yourself? To avoid those expensive real estate commissions? And we can make you more money on top of that even. And again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week with our next tip or strategy for selling your house yourself. <laughs>